hey there guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be working on another application and we're going to be using Vite this time it's a local development server rather than using create react app so i think on the last project i did i did say uh, we're going to be transitioning into z uh into v uh rather than create a react app it's just a lot more faster we're Music able to uh, uh proxy things a little bit more better efficiently let's say that we're able to pro uh we're able to proxy uh with our server a little bit more efficiently than we did with create react app so things like that is why we're transitioning to v but with all that said today's app is more on the advanced side so we've been doing more beginner friendly and intermediate type application but this is an original idea and it's uh it's an, not only is it an original idea, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> so not only is it an original idea, it is also um, a bit more advanced in the sense that we're going to be using WebSockets. And for anyone who doesn't understand what WebSockets are, it's a way to, without going into the semantics and the, the, the nitty gritty of it all, it's a way to chat in real time or send information in real time which, between uh, different users so between different applications so you're able to uh, like your chat feature on your on your messaging devices um, that's uh, they, they use sockets to do such things so this be being on the web is gonna be a web socket so we're gonna be doing that and not only are we using web sockets we're gonna be in, uh, we're going to be working more with a database in order to write an algorithm that's going to work with our project. So I've been rambling on about this project. What this project really is, is a way to uh, fill a gap when you try and play sports with Music other people. Licensing. So as we get older, we, we don't really have time to just walk into any establishment and, you know, get people together to play sports. So let's take tennis, for example, right? If you walk into an establishment nine times out of ten you go in alone trying to find friends to play with and you might not want to pay for classes just to meet people because you know economy and you know it's kind of expensive so this is where this application comes in you can use this application in whatever sports world you want so with this application you go in and you register and you're not going to be giving out any private credentials it's just things anyone can find out so your first name and your date of birth so um and this is important the date of birth is important because we're going to be using an algorithm that's going to be running our date of birth so this is going to be a simple I algorithmic uh application we're not going to be you know building tinder here so the uh, so you register you create a profile once you create this profile um you're sent back to the home page and this home page populates every profile that's within uh, a plus five Music minus five age range imagine. of uh, yourself, of the user. So with that, now you're able to sort between people who are willing to play seven days a week, people who are willing to play just on Saturdays or the weekends, on Mondays, on Tuesdays. It's going to be right there. So let's say you find Bob and Bob is willing to play on Tuesdays and you're like, whoa, I'm available on Tuesdays. Then it's a match. So all you do is just go over to the chat feature. You find Bob and you send Bob a message You're like, hey, I found your profile. Uh, it says you're available to play on a, a Saturday or a Tuesday or whenever uh, at noon. Are you still available? And I would love to play with you. And with that, you just wait for a response from Bob and you're all connected. So, yes, it's an advanced style application, but the process is going to be a little bit easier uh, because we're not going to be writing uh google level algorithms for this project it's just to introduce you into an uh, advanced style application so with all that said let's get right into it i will be showing you how uh the 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 server and the client side are going to be interacting with them uh, with with one another before going into how we're going to build this but sit back um and let's get ready to code okay so like i said in the in the last uh, application we built which was the Marvel application um, we're going to be working with the uh, with authentication also in this one so let me just give you a quick run 
down run through of what we did in the last one that we're also going to implement and how we're going to add more features uh, with the WebSocket. So first we have the, our client. Um, this is going to be a full stack up, uh, application. So we have our client and when we log into our application, we query the database. Once we query the database, um, if the credentials or our username is within the database, then uh, well, if, if the credentials are incorrect, then we don't go through. If it is correct, then we are able to uh, generate a JSON web token. And the web token is going to contain our information. So our user ID, username, etc. Et so once we do that, we now send this JWT token. We send the token to the client so the, it's generated in the back end but it's then sent to the client as a cookie within the browser so that's how the the authorization part works but now um, how do we then continue further in the back end with our web sockets and things like that so now we have our server generated right i mean our server generated token and user information so now we're going to take this uh token and we're going to use it when we turn on our web socket, uh, web, web server socket. So that's what is going on uh, with WSS web server socket is uh, turning on. So with that, since we do, this is stating that we do have uh, a token generated. So we send the username and the user ID uh, to online users, meaning the the contents within the token is then sent to the front end um to say hey these people are online as uh and it's sent as a cookie the same way in the login so it's sent to the client and now if the client sends a message to any of those online users we have to check to make sure that the message is being sent with the recipient the sender and the text why because that is the schema we gave it within um within our database so our database houses the schema that says hey our we need to have a recipient code. we have to have a sender and we have to have the text message that's being sent so if we do not have these three things then we are denied uh the message is not sent uh because it cannot be saved in our database if it is uh, if it does include all those things, then we save the message to our database, Use just like so. So imagine. now that we have it saved to the database, we now want to query that database again and send the message history back to the client. So that's where this comes in. So let me go back here and run it through again. So um, that is basically the idea of what we're going to be doing with our uh, WebSocket, we're going to be using, uh, since it's a full stack uh, application, we're going to be using, uh, making use of both the client and the server to communicate uh, throughout our application. So here we have our, uh, uh, our history, our message history sent back to the client, and we're done with our application. So that makes it sound very uh, very easy, but it's, it's a lot of a uh, manual labor to get all this done. So now let's actually take a look at what our uh, application looks like. So let's head over to our application and let's demo it. So let's go over to register and we're just going to go to register and say our first name is test YouTube one uh, email is test YouTube one at test.com test you two one and show password test YouTube one. Okay. And now we can submit this. And as you can see, because we're registering for the first time, we're prompted right, uh, right then and there to create a profile to update our profile. And for our profile, we're just going to say the birth date. We're going to go over to 1997. Shout out to my nineties kids out there. And we're just going to pick December 29. And just like today's December 29. So we're just going to pick that gender male rating, we're going to go with um, 2.5 to 3.0 and days available to play. We're just going to pick Thursday, Friday and Saturday time looking to play. We're going to pick the evening. 
and then we're going to say oh well as you can see we have an alternate email here and the alternate email is for our um is for our uh password reset so if we get locked out of our account where do we want our reset code to be sent to and as you can see first it has a backup here but that's not allowed that's not a syntax that's allowed for email category so what we want to do is we want to put backup here and it's going to be test youtube one backup at test.com and we're going to save that profile and now once we do that it says hi test youtube one and we're directed uh right to this um to this uh hero page and by being directed to this hero page i am also logged in in safari as the user called test so what's interesting about this is that if you look over here, test says uh, this user test shows that it's online via this green dot right here. Everything else that's not online has the red dot. So this has this green dot stating that the user is online. If I go over to Safari and I sort, um, so that's something we can also add. We can sort by people who are online. So that would also help this. But so far, we can sort by name, age, rating, gender, and availability. So if we sort by, let's say, age or name. Uh, yeah, let's sort by availability. Let's see, let's sort by gender, rating. So as you can see, all this works. Um, I'm just trying to make sure. Give me one second. Name and sort. There we go. So as you can see, all that works perfectly. So if you go to the second page, um, well, as you can see, uh, with Safari, there's a break <laughs> in the CSS. But if we go over to Chrome, everything works fine. So we have to make sure the CSS works perfectly for both. Um, let's go over back to Safari. And as you can see, test YouTube. Oh, I guess test YouTube is over here somewhere. Actually, let's refresh this to make sure. Let's log back in and let's go over here. Okay, there we go. It's because we just created it. So, um, like I said, we can fix this CSS breakage later, but right now, well, you can see test one, U test YouTube one is also online via this green dot. So green dot, green dot here. And now if we go over to this chat functionality and we head over to chat here, you can see test here shows that they're available. And we are logged in as test one, sensor. test YouTube one Imagined. here. Um, Safari here, we're logged in as test. So if we click on test YouTube one as the two uh, online uh, users from test YouTube one, I can chat and say, hi, one, two, three, four, five. I'd say hi, test, hi, test, one, two, three, four, five, and send that. And as you can see in real time, it has sent this over. Um, Okay, so it sent this over. So right now we're having a little bit of trouble with the with the time. So here it says 12 a.m. and it's clearly not 12 a.m. Um, and here it has the correct time. So the thing is with Safari and Chrome, uh, some codes work a little differently. So we have to make sure it's universal on all applications. And right now this is, I've gone through the alpha testing. So this is while we build our own creation, it's gonna be like a, a beta testing while we create it. So we're gonna be refining the code as we create it. Um, this took a long time to create. So it's not, it, it's not as easy as going back to just uh, redo it. But since we're gonna build it together again, um, it's going to be sort of like beta testing because we're going to refine the code even more. So right now it says you can see that it has both uh, both uh, both messages come in at the exact same time. We can see here that we have one notification from test uh, one notification uh, on our uh, uh, from test. So this is a test account. So test sent us one uh, one um, one message and we once we click on this to send back a message it just clears up so hi test and now we can say um hello test two three four five six and send that over um so as you can see <laughs> that's another bug we have to squash when we build it this is supposed to go away but like i said uh this taking so long to build it took a couple of weeks slash months to build this out so 
it's not i'm not able to go back and refine the whole code since i know we're gonna rebuild it again um so we just have to add a little extra this and that to it and we should be all good but the main part of the code works and that's what we're looking for and this is basically what we're going to be building out um the functionality works properly just the css portions is what we're having a little bit of trouble with but everything right now works perfectly and once we go back to match play you can still see test is online so let's do this if i come back to test here and i come back here if i log out as you can see it goes right back offline so our functionality works perfectly so let's just close out of this and let's close out of safari well we're all set with that um, now another thing we can do is let's say you're on this app and you just want to know what the top stories are for uh, uh, for tennis is Wimbledon going on what, what's going on we can go over to our trending page and trending you can see we have uh, a nice group of uh, uh, news articles that it's it, it comes right from our uh, uh, API so we draw it from the API and it populates here and when you click this it takes you directly to that site where this is populating from where this is uh where the source is coming from and we can also search whatever sports topic we want to search so if we're a fan of uh where my uh where my soccer fans are if we say PSG and we search that as you can see real madrid will reopen mbappe's transfer despite and kickoff strain clause and xpsg stars middle whatever so uh now you're not bored on the app if no one's uh, online you can just search and read through various news articles that pertain to sports um, if you go back to match play as you can see uh, we're back here so um, the only problem we're having now is just on two different browsers the CSS works a bit differently so we just have to uh, we just have to fix that and that's pretty much all we're doing okay guys so that's gonna be it for this part so I'm gonna uh, tag this as part one and all we did here is just showcase what we're gonna be working on so I don't want this particular the first video to be ultra long uh, but uh, the, the, this is basically what we're going to be working on so it's a lot it's a lot of code <laughs> it's a lot of coding going on here but like i said it's a more advanced version of what we've all been working on we're adding things that we've done before uh the nav bar with our uh with our login logout functionality we're adding that um, we have trending which is just a news app that we've built before uh, we're populating things from the database which is something we've done before we're sorting so things that we've done before we're compiling everything to make a more advanced app uh, we're, we're writing algorithms to, to make sure that um, what we want populated is populated so with that said I'm gonna leave it uh, at this for part one don't forget to like comment subscribe and let me know uh, what you guys think about the project going forward I'll see you guys on the next one Peace.